Hi, everybody. It's Eric Murray from TheSugarHuddle.com. Well, not surprisingly, both of the college football playoff semifinal games were pretty much blowouts. Yes, Oklahoma did make it somewhat interesting in the second half, but nonetheless, an 11-point loss kind of felt like 21 points. And, of course, Notre Dame got annihilated in the first game against Clemson in the Cotton Bowl. You know, it, a lot of people kind of thought that both games might not be very competitive. And, again, except for a little bit, in the second half from Oklahoma, neither game was particularly good. A lot of college football playoff semifinal games haven't been great. And like a lot of people predicted back in August, Clemson versus Alabama in the national title game in Santa Clara in nine days from now, uh, January 7th. So, you know, we'll see how that game goes. But, you know, going over these two games, Notre Dame, I, I was surprised how well they played early on. Very competitive game. You know, it's 3-3. Three, three. And then Clemson, you know, they get a long touchdown. They go up 9-3. to three. Trevor Lawrence really started to come into his own. Uh, and then really what kind of killed Notre Dame is, you know, they had a few nice early drives. One led to a turnover on downs. The field goal drive could have been a touchdown drive. They squandered some opportunities. And then they just couldn't do anything the rest of the game. They, their offense just completely disappeared. I think they had – it was like up around – it was like – 248 total yards of offense and probably a good portion of that was within the first you know quarter quarter and a half so you know Trevor Lawrence he had you know three long touchdown passes uh, down the stretch in the second quarter Clemson had I think roughly 250 total yards of offense in the second quarter alone so that was kind of the difference in this one because they led 23 to 3 at half uh, Ian Book, you know, he had fumbled on a second possession. Clemson gets a field goal out of it. Notre Dame answers right back. Then they have a turnover on downs on the drive after that. And then Trevor Lawrence's favorite target in this game was Justin Ross. Found him on a beautiful 52-yard touchdown pass. That was 12.50 to go in the second quarter, and they got the extra point blocked, believe it or not. So it was 9-3. Then they surprisingly missed a field goal on their next drive. Kept it 9-3, kept Notre Dame alive. But again, Notre Dame couldn't do anything with it. Then he finds Ross again for, for a 42-yard score, another beautiful dime of a throw. That was with 144 to go in the first half. So 16-3, and you're thinking, Notre Dame, you know, I, I felt like, you know, they're, they're going to kick Notre Dame's you-know-what. But at least generally speaking, especially if you're Notre Dame, you can think to yourself, well, you know what, we're trailing by a couple touchdowns going to the locker room. Could be worse. We have a chance to turn this game around pretty quickly. We're still in it. And then basically right before the half is game set match because uh, Lawrence, you know, they, they drove down the field, got the ball back less than a minute left, and they, I think they only scored in like 38 or 40 seconds. And he found T. Higgins' 19-yard touchdown. Higgins did a beautiful job hanging on to it and keeping full control in the back of the end zone when he was covered. Two seconds left, so they would have ended up just kicking a shorter a shorter field goal, yeah, about, about, about a 37-yard field goal, but still a very makeable kick for their kicker. So 23-3, that was all she wrote. Remember Dexter Lawrence, he failed the drug test, the, the great defensive tackle for Clemson. So he didn't play this game. It didn't matter because Albert Huggins, the senior, you know, has first-round talent. He, he did a nice job. They had six sacks as a team, so they really dominated Notre Dame's defensive line. And I think the big thing is Ian Book, he really looked lost a, a lot in this game. You know, he, he didn't have the greatest game against USC, but he still played real well ultimately. And this one, there were a lot of times where he was kind of bailing out and, and just kind of trying to scramble and didn't gain much. Clemson, just a clearly more athletic and, and more talented team than Notre Dame. At the end of the day, uh, Book it was 17 to 34, buck 60 in an interception. As a team, they had 35 rushing attempts for 88 yards. You know, Clemson has the best defense line, arguably in college football. Obviously, our, Alabama has an argument as well. And they have the best statistically run defense in college football, and they definitely showed it in this one. You know, Notre Dame really wanted to establish a run, and 35 carries, 88 yards. You know, two and a half yards to carry, that's not going to get done. So they can never really establish a run. Trevor Lawrence, you know, true freshman. He looks like he'll be the number one overall pick in the NFL draft in a few years when he's eligible. 27 to 39, 327 and three scores. Most of that damage was in the first half. Travis Etienne did lose a fumble, but generally had an excellent game. 14 carries, 109 and a score. As a team, they had 37 for 211. And I think they had, no, I think they just had the one, uh, yeah, the one rushing touchdown. Uh, and so overall, I mean, just a, a impressive get and Ross six receptions 148 yards a couple scores so overall very impressive game and you know this is kind of what we wanted to see our Clemson because Clemson not a very tough schedule uh throughout the year and so playing a team like Notre Dame who's basically an unofficial ACC team a lot of common opponents a lot of familiarity there and really uh 
great job by Clemson just showing that they're one of the two best teams in college football, not surprisingly back in the national championship game, and a more legitimate quarterback than last year when they had Kelly Bryant shows that this is a team that they're not going to lay down to Alabama like they did last year. And speaking of Alabama, they, uh, you know, they played Oklahoma in the Orange Bowl, and a lot of people thought you know, maybe Oklahoma can get them into a shootout, be a high-scoring game, ultimately end up being a high-scoring game. But uh, you know, Alabama had a 28 nothing lead in, you know, early in the second quarter and route to a 45-34 victory. Those first three possessions, they just were just getting after Kyler Murray, the Heisman Trophy winner. You know, back-to-back sacks, I believe, on the opening possession. First two drives were three and out, zero total yards on those first two drives for Oklahoma. Oklahoma's first three drives, 13 plays for 24 yards. That third drive, uh, turnover on downs, they kind of felt compelled to go for it midfield. You know, couldn't convert on fourth down. So, you know, Alabama early on, they really established their dominance. Uh, on the other side of it, you know, two attack of Iloa, who a lot of people thought should have won the Heisman. He obviously was runner-up, you know, ankle 80 85 percent but he looked like he's 100 percent because he was throwing a lot of darts you know first play from scrimmage uh to De- i think it was Devonte smith if i'm not mistaken uh yeah fi- you know, rpo 50 yard reception slant across the middle almost broke it for a touchdown damian harris actually fumbled at the one soon after but the replay overturned it and it is clearly uh he fumbled after he was already down and then he scores on the next play at another short one yard rushing touchdown a couple of possessions later Tua had a couple of touchdown passes that were both over 20 yards quickly 28 nothing Oklahoma though did rally you know they finally got in the end zone then they were down 28 to 7 really could have made it interesting maybe made it like a 28 14 game they were at the nine yard line it was like fourth and five and Lincoln Riley for some reason he decided to sell for a field goal then the second half down 31 to 10 at the half you know 14 play drive uh Hollywood Brown, who was banged up and had two drop passes, didn't have any catches in this game, drops what would have been a first down at the sticks, fourth and I believe a six, and they were at like the nine yard line again. Settle for another field goal, make it 31 13. So if, if you go for it and you get it both times and you score both times, it's a 31 21 game. And even if you only go for it that second time and then you eventually score a 31 17 game, it's a hell of a lot different than 31 13 games. So Lincoln Riley, you know, second half and, and overtime in the Rose Bowl last year against Georgia where they had that. Huge lead, 17-point lead, eventually a 14-point lead at the half. You know, he got totally outcoached in the second half, didn't make any adjustments, very conservative, a lot of head-scratching decisions. When they went down 28 nothing, it really wasn't his fault at all. But then the rest of the game, I, I thought there were some decisions, especially those field goals. He didn't manage things well. And, you know, Nick Saban, because of that running game, Alabama running game, he didn't try to force Tua to throw it 40-plus times or else they might have, you know, won this game by like three or four touchdowns so again Oklahoma's defense letting them down you know Kyler Murray did make it somewhat interesting after that they scored to make it an 11 point game 31 20 was still like three minutes left in the third he threw a beautiful pass on the run 49 yard bomb uh to uh, Charleston Rambo but just too little too late and Alabama answered right back with another score two of was 24 of 27 318 yards four touchdowns four different receivers Josh Jacobs, who you know, is actually from Tulsa, Oklahoma, didn't get recruited by Oklahoma. 15 carries, 98 yards, also had four receptions, 60 yards, and a touchdown. He was fired up. On the other side of it, Murray did end up having a really good game statistically. 19 of 37, 308, and two scores. 17 carries, 109 yards, and a touchdown. Lamb, eight, CD Lamb, eight receptions, 109 yards, and he also had a touchdown along the way. But, again, just too little, too late. They just ended up, you know, down 28 nothing. I mean, it's hard to come back from that, especially playing against a team like Alabama. So give Oklahoma a lot of credit, but Alabama's a better team. So leading up to the national title game, I'm going to try to make a video previewing that game. Remember, that game's January 7th, so it'll be right around the corner. I'm going to be here very, very soon in just over a week. That'll be Alabama and Clemson, the number one and two teams in the country, playing in Santa Clara, Levi Stadium, home of the Niners. We'll see how the field and weather conditions are for that one. Not not very good field at, at that stadium usually. But anyways, we'll talk about that more uh, in a little over a week. So anyways, college football playoff games, not overly eventful. But anyways, please go to sugarhuddle.com. Please like my Facebook page, The Sugar Huddle, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.